Hello and welcome back and before we start today's video I just wanted to bring you guys over here and let's have a little conversation about irony. See this is my PS5, this one. You can tell because I'm one of those knobbers that's gone to the trouble of putting custom plates on it. Now I have been going through SSDs for weeks. I've still got more videos to go and I'm going to be going through all of these SSDs and going through exactly their performance including this video. But you know what? Even though I've had the beta for ages, even though it's now out there that you can put SSDs inside, because I have to keep testing these things, because I want to keep testing these for you guys, and I go through more and more games, and I have to move them back to the console and to the SSD and back to the console, I can't actually put an SSD inside this system for myself. Because if I put an SSD in, I've only got to remove it afterwards to put in another one. So I, who have got loads and loads of SSDs, I, who have had the beta, and I, who can now use all the SSDs to my place that I want, is the one sod who can't use this feature, because I have to keep pulling the SSDs out to make these videos. So do me a favour, when you watch this video, do know that when I'm making it, I'm making a video for a system service that I cannot use. <laughs> Hello and welcome back and that slightly petulant introduction out of the way, yes that's right, today we are looking at four of my favourite SSDs, we are looking at the Seren Rocket 4 Plus, the WD Black, the Samsung 980 Pro and the Seagate Biocuda 530, we're looking at these four SSDs, we're looking at all of the performance of the games that we've tested in the past and we are comparing them together, in previous videos we have compared these SSDs against the internal PS5 SSD, but in this video we are looking at how they compare against one another, these are what I can Consider to be my top four in terms of price, in terms of performance, in terms of value, in terms of service and, and uh, robust endurance and stuff like that. We are looking at all the others and comparing all the others based on all of the results that we gathered during both the beta period and post beta period of PS5 system software M2 SST support. So in today we are going through a myriad of games that we've talked about already in the past. And again, I am going to look at my notes. We're looking at Borderlands 3, Star Wars, Jedi Fallen Nola, In Rays of the Lights of Nautica, Oddworld, Hitman, Terminator, no Man's Sky, Red Dead Redemption, and Dead by Daylight. We're going to look at one um, session from each of these SSDs and comparing how each of them loaded against one another. And we're going to be grading them on which one loads first. We're not looking at textures. We're not looking at draw distance. We're not looking at asset management outside of initial loading. So again, one test per game on this system. But a few disclaimers straight off the bat. First and foremost, yes, this has all been recorded using the beta footage from before. These SSDs... Even early testing have showed us the performance of these SSDs is absolutely the same in both the beta and the full release of this system software update. So that's absolutely fine. Secondly, they are different capacities in some cases, but all of these SSDs are rated 7,000 megs re, uh, sequential read individual. Although there may be slight airs of contention, the odd 50 to 100 megabytes per second here or there, it has to be said that in this system, with its own bottleneck being reached, it's not really a factor in this comparison because they are all in that same rating and that same sequential read side by side. Now, my previous video comparing these four SSDs, the Seagate uh, Firecuda one by a hair's breadth, like one by one point at the end uh, with the WD Black and the Cybrent Rocket 4 Plus drawing for second place, just one point behind it. I don't know how this video is going to end, but you're going to find out now. So let's go through all of our test footage and again some of these games I've retested since the original recording because at that point it was beta 3.0 not 3.1 so again there's been some retests but all of these are done on the same PlayStation in the same save games in the same loading scenario so let's go through all of those recordings and at the end we're going to go through all of those test results to see which one frame by frame was the fastest to load so let's get straight on to it Right, so here we are on screen, and the first game, of course, is Borderlands 3. It's a whole level load. Here we go, directly from the title screen, indeed, from the uh, main title screen on the PS5, all of them loading. You're already seeing some distinction between them there, and definitely the one behind early doors is that Seagate Fire Cuda. Anyone that's followed my other videos will know that what we've been keeping an eye on here is little claptrap there when he makes his way across the screen. So we can see, and let's go, I'll be honest, the WD Black and the Sabrent seemingly have already started this. Let's see how long the second run goes on for there. 
But again, it does look like it's going to be a face-off between the Sabrent and the WD Black. For this game, at the very least, let's have a look. And we're almost there. Yeah, that's a clear win for the WD Black. We will revisit this at the end of the video. But it's hard to say it's anything but a WD Black by almost three quarters of a second there. Next, it's continuing from Borderlands 3. Now we're moving into an existing save spot from the title screen. All running at exactly the same time there. The little spinning discs are slightly out of sync there, but let's carry on and have a look how things are going. And yes, wow, that is a huge lead there by the Seagate Fire Cooter on that game. And again, we will analyse that later, but that was definitely a solid win there for the Seagate. Going into Jedi Fallen Order, a really long, dull, boring intro here. Um, largely black screen, it has to be said. And from here, we're going to have a little look which one of these loads up first and this is from the title screen into the Kashyyyk area of the game I believe um, to see which one kicks in and we're seeing it and I think that was the Fire Cuda it would have been very tight we will see at the end of the video but I think that's the Seagate Fire Cuda by just a handful of um, Seagate Fire Cuda by a handful of frames next in the Rays of Light we've done this one all loading from the desktop there all loading and you know what that's near enough impossible to tell that one i mean i was looking at that whoever did win that that's going to be by near a frame i would say so little as to make no difference but let's move on to the next game there which is going to be again let's have a look it is subnautica going into subnautica all from exactly the same place loading into a creative mode from the title screen we've got all the information there on screen for the loading and the assets I'm erring towards the WD there. That seems to be snapping towards them just a pinch quicker than everyone else. Let's have a little look. We're almost in there. Yeah, the WD has cleared that. Wow, by two, potentially even three seconds of clearance there in between them. So again, very hard to argue with that one. Odd World, we can make our way into this one. That's Odd World Soulstorm and see how this kicks it through at the loading screen there. And again, all of these are loading from the title screen. Lovely and straightforward all the way through. And again, near enough identical. Ooh, that is going to be a tough one to call later. That's if I had to guess, I'd say maybe the WD, but again, I'm not sure. That's one we're going to have to recheck later on um, in the post-frame analysis there. Let's move into the next one. This is Hitman 3. It's one of the early maps. It's a world load test, and we're making our way in. And again, Hitman here. We're having a look. We've got it all on screen. What are we seeing it making its way through? And for now... I'm erring towards, again, the Samsung 980 Pro there. I think the Samsung 980 that's really been at the back there, I think that was a win game as we go into it. It's, of course, Terminator Resistance, the Terminator Infiltrator mode. And again, this is going to be a long, old load sequence here. You can kind of hear the fans from my laptop trying to kick there in the background. I apologize for that background noise. Uh, we're going to include the opening cinematic. And even looking at it now, I feel like, they're largely identical. There's slightly kind of deceptive view with the wobbling camera there. But if you look at the assets in the background and how they're being introduced um, in this pre-rendered um, cutscene, this is coming definitely from an earlier file that's already there. I think right now, just looking at the way things are disappearing off screen, I think this is near enough identical. And it's going to come down to how quickly the game loads into the actual world. This cutscene can be skipped. But given that it can be skipped at this stage, I'd say that these are all running fairly identically. Something that I think will have to come through a little bit truer later on when we look at the frame-by-frame -frame analysis. But yeah, they they felt identical. Uh, that might even be the first time we've ever seen a four-way tie uh, doing these videos. But for now, let's make our way into the next game, which is, of course, No Man's Sky. This is loading creative mode directly from the desktop. Um, so that's going into the game all simultaneously in the same way. There is a huge amount of random variables in this game. And you can see that drop in frame rate that we always see on No Man's Sky. But for now, I'll say that whatever the results of No Man's Sky, it's going to be one that's slightly contentious anyway due to the random nature of the game. So although we will see, it looks to me like, yeah, the Rocket 4 Plus took that by a decent stretch there. Um, the Rocket 4 Plus, and again, we will count this up later on. Let's go into our second to last game, which is going to be Red Dead Redemption 2. So here we are at the splash screen there. Let's go into the loading now. 
And Red Dead Redemption 2, all of these are running into the single player campaign. One early noticing thing there, I don't know if you guys saw that, even though all four games loaded from the exact um, icon change at the desktop there, which is how we make sure these are all running simultaneously, the Sabrent seems to be a margin quicker. Uh, now again, we're not, I'm not 100% certain why I will look into that, but there's definitely a clear advantage there for the Sabrent rocket as we go into the games there, even though all four games were started at the same icon change frame at the title screen of the game. But let's see if that plays out afterwards as we make our way into the single player. And yes, the Sabrent rocket there by half a second, maybe close to three quarters of a second, clearly took the advantage there. And as we go into our last game, Dead by Daylight, this was a... Um, um, a tutorial mode versus a bunch of bots. So we got no in online services there. All of them started on exactly the same keyframe there. Um, at the moment, the Sabrent looks like it has the margin of uh, advantage over the Seagate, but we'll have to see how things load into the actual game because that icon there, their logo is impossible to follow. But no, that was definitely the Seagate Fire Cuda that took the advantage there long term. And although all of them have loaded pretty similar, it definitely took the lead. Right, so let's make our way through the results on all four of these SSDs. I'm quite close to the laptop, so I apologize if you hear the fan noise. But for now, let's go through which SSDs loaded which game quickest, slowest, and ultimately how they compare in our face-off results. We're going to go through all the games. And remember, it's frame-by-frame -frame analysis, and we're only looking at in-game asset loading. So, uh, initial loading there of Borderlands 3 from the XMB. Unquestionably, the WD Black SN850 took a huge lead there early doors by more than a second if we move into loading from the game another clear winner here was the fire cuda loading from the title screen on borderlands 3 and again by a comfortable margin there however on jedi fallen order although the fire cuda wins it there at the top right it's such a small win that i think uh, we can't really count much into that we will give it the point though however rays of the light could not separate that for me that was a four-way tie on all of them all getting a point there however subnautica wd black pulls it right the way back there with more than a second in loading compared to the other ssds loading creative mode if we go into odd world soulstorm all but the seagate uh, sorry the samsung 980 pro for me i gave it a three-way tie there they're all getting a point each However, flipping over to Hitman 3, again, the Samsung turned things around and managed to get another point on the board there uh, in Hitman 3. They're loading quickest. Now, in Terminator, even after the cutscene at the beginning, four-way tie could not break any margin of difference between them. They all get a point. Third to last game, No Man's Sky with its elements of the random connectivity, but nonetheless, we'll give this one to the Sabrent, loading in assets the quickest with a fire cooter just behind. Same goes going into Red Dead Redemption 2. The Sabrent took it with the Samsung and the WD literally just behind it there. But again, the Sabrent took it. And finally, on... Um, Dead by Daylight, the Fire Cuda takes it and thereby getting that final point, pipping it just into the lead there for me. So let's go through those results. Well, once again, the Seagate Fire Cuda takes the lead there. But of course, do bear in mind that Seagate Fire Cuda, even though it won by one point and one of those points was incredibly close, it is the most expensive drive of the four. So I've got to say that I would want it to be the best given it's the most expensive. But do bear in mind you are paying more for durability for the rescue service and of course the performance, the right performance too. But the WD Black, the Sabrent and the Samsung are all very, very good drives in terms of quality, in terms of build and of course in terms of price. And the WD Black and the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus being a more affordable price point compared to the Fire Cuda does mean that they do still win in their own way. I'm still a little underwhelmed by that Samsung, the way it's performed. Yes, a number of you are going to highlight that the capacity is smaller than the others. But again, in terms of sequential write, we're at a point now, uh, sequential read, I should say, we're at a point now on the system where the games and the internal hardware and the way these games are designed, there's enough bottlenecks that all of these drives are going to be treated very, very similarly. And therefore, that small difference there 
I'm not prepared to give it too much waylay. But for that, that has been our second face-off. We have one more face-off left to do that's going to come in a few weeks. And in the meantime, we are going to be looking at facing off against some of those second-tier SSDs, the MSI Spatium, the Corsair MP600 Pro, uh, that Gamex S70, and other SSDs of that ilk. So do stay tuned for those. But I hope you found this helpful. There are links to all the SSDs and indeed a bunch of recommended heat sinks in the description. Click like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to learn more, and enjoy your PS5 SSD expanded storage. I will see you next time.